Manhattan, turn of the century. Most experts believe the skyline was about as high as it could go. But in 1907, Charles Schwab, founder of Bethlehem Steel, bought a license from Henry Gray that enabled Bethlehem to produce solid piece, wide flange beams. The mill was on stream in 1908. Orders rolled in, beams rolled out, and the face of the nation began to change. Gray mill was a wide flange beam mill, which basically rolls, for simplicity, an H type of a beam or an I type of a beam. And in the early part of, of American history, they did not roll this as one piece. They used to take a plate and weld four angles on each corner to make the H or the I. And it was a lot, all was riveted together. You've probably heard the stories about Rosie the Riveter, because they would have to drill all the holes and then put all these hot rivets in in order to make an H-beam. And then these were obviously used in buildings primarily. But the buildings could not be built as high because of all the rivets and the basically fabricated pieces. So there was kind of a limit as to the, uh, the height of the building should have. Actually, the first gray mill was installed in Europe. But the first one in the United States was R-48. And what it did was radically reduce the cost and make available to the construction industry a new profile of hot rolled product that really aided the whole industrial revolution from a structural building standpoint. The 1907 gray mill remains in place today, but a recent modernization program gave it a facelift. A computerized, state-of-the-art roughing mill was added. The new 59-inch mill will give Bethlehem the most consistent, dimensionally exact product with the highest quality in today's structural steel market. The Bethlehem plant, similarly to the Bethlehem Corporation, has three key goals. And our key goals are improvement of product quality, improvement of customer service, and a reduction of cost. The new 59-inch mill allows us an opportunity to attack each one of those areas. In terms of improvement of quality, it gives us the ability to make a section that is closer to the tolerance of the customer. And in terms of customer service, it gives us a tool to allow us to meet the customer's ship-by date more readily than we may have met it before. And in terms of cost reduction, it allows us an ability to help reduce some of our cost of production. So the new mill in itself is a tool that allows us, the people of the Bethlehem plant, an opportunity to attack three of the key goals that we have established. Customer service improvement, quality improvement, and cost reduction. I think mainly uh, we're going to be seeing an improvement in, in the configurational and dimensional quality characteristics of the, of the product, uh, more from the standpoint of reduced variability than anything else. Uh, one of the big gains we hope to make is, is a reduction in in uh, our weight per foot variability and have weight per foot much closer to our uh, specified aims. Quality wise, we get what we want. We, we are not subject to changes without knowing it. We have what we want. We measure a sample, we could uh, adjust the mill and it's gonna stay there. The 59 inch mill is a, is a modern mill that's electrified and is a much bigger and sturdy mill with, uh, with all kinds of modern features on it for uh, speeding up roll change, for uh, getting better dimensional control of the bar. It's a much more precise instrument than the old 48 inch mill rougher was. So we expect to see much uh, better uh, dimensional control over the bars by running them through the new mill. In addition, the new mill, after we, get, after we learn how to use it, uh, will enable us to take uh, some passes off the finisher. In fact, we've already started doing that. And the finisher was an older 1908 mill. Uh, we'd be able to run the bar through with fewer passes there and less stress and strain on the old mill. 
Similarly, we may be able to, in the future, uh, be able to take some passes off the older bloomer. So that the 59-inch mill takes a bigger load of the three stands. The real motivation for us putting the mill in is, is for quality. That was the original motivation, and in, and in fact, we're seeing that it is delivering uh, a much better quality product. But I think overall, from a plant standpoint, it's going to affect just about every facet of, a, of, of our business. It's going to affect our productivity and our, and our costs, our energy consumption, our service, and uh, it, it's going to make us more competitive. In today's market, being more competitive is a necessity. And Bethlehem plant employees are well aware of the competition. That's why training for the new mill was a top priority. In fact, the new mill was installed offline long before actual operation was to begin. A purpose? Hands-on training for everyone, without losing valuable production time. The reason to bring in a new mill, put it into an offline position, and move it over was to afford us an opportunity to do better training, afford us an opportunity to learn uh, how the new mill operates, correct the mistakes, whatever we find offline, to allow us minimal disruptions to our customer and to allow us to bring that mill online for production at a shorter time span than if we would have just brought a mill on without the training, without the offline knowledge that we gained. After the offline training was completed, the 450-ton complex was moved 300 feet across the mill building into its permanent location. The offline training paid off. The first structural products began rolling on the new 59-inch mill in less than three weeks. Plant employees were very pleased with the minimal amount of lost production time, but our customers were even happier. Our customers are very happy with our startup, and I think one of the biggest concerns they had was that here we are taking 50% of our capacity down and uh, really shutting it down and hoping that when we put the new mill in, the whole thing will come up in a reasonable amount of time so that they won't have uh, to go to other suppliers because they have long-term ties with us. And it, at this point, with a very strong market, it's difficult for them to get uh, steel from other suppliers. So I think their big concern was availability. And uh, our startup has really given them a little bit of a breath of relief because we're pretty much on target. Uh, for what we said we would do uh, in the startup phase. And they're very happy. The feedback is very positive. Preparing, installing, and operating the modernized mill was a difficult task, but Bethlehem employees were up and ready. They're really up about it. I think everybody uh, is up about it and has a right to be. Uh, I think it's a real tribute right from the very start that when we started the mill up, we did not have any significant reduction in quality or any quality problems uh, compared to what we had prior to uh, pulling out the old mill. Uh, it, it tells a lot about the, the attitudes and the planning and the training uh, of everybody involved that we could start the new mill up and, and come out running. Uh, the attitudes, the, the energy, uh, the willingness to to participate in a team effort was never more uh, identified as it was on our 59-inch mill installation startup. Our, our Partners for Progress program uh, worked to, to the nth degree in the, in the cooperation and the spirit of our 59-inch mill startup, and that's what's made it the success it has been. The, the new 59-inch mill, what it means about the plant, it, it, it means life. It's breathing life into the plant again. It, it, it's, it means employment. It means, uh, I think, a, a future for the younger generation. Our philosophy is such that there's nothing can't be improved on. I don't care if it came from 1907 or 1990. It can be improved on, and we are constantly trying to do one bit more than we did before. And that's what, that's what keeps you alive and well. I think we've set harder standards for ourselves on the quality. 
where, where we're trying to perfect. People worried, well, if we got a new mill, we wouldn't continually try to improve the quality. I think the, the opposite is true. We, we take it and we reach a new level of quality, but they keep trying to make it better, trying to what we call roll the trophy bars. We had a shift last night of HB12 where the centers basically stayed the same for the whole shift, which under the old mill, we could probably work the whole shift and continually making moves all the time. And it was still saleable, but we didn't have the degree of stability we now have with the new mill. And I think the people are believers now. They definitely are. You hear all the doom and gloom in the structural market, but we're, this is like the Alamo, and I guess I'm Davy Crockett. And they just, they're going to be fierce fighters. We're on the offense now, instead of the doom and gloom defense. We're on the offense, and I think our people are going to show that. The old Gray Mill, a tribute to Henry Gray, who planned and worked for years to make his dream turn into a reality. The new 59-inch mill, a tribute to the people at the Bethlehem plant who believed it could work and made it happen in record time. Combining the old and the new has made the gray mill more competitive. It will give Bethlehem an edge in the structural steel market of the future.